All right, now we are going to do section 5.7. And you guys, this is another review. So this one should go pretty qu quick. It is solving equations. Remember an equation is a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign, okay? When we say expression, that means no equal sign, but an equation means, yes, it is going to have an equal sign. All right, so the first one we're going to do, let's do a little review in case we forgot how to solve equations. If I have an equation that says x minus 2 equals 8, I know you can do this in your head, you guys, but we have to get into the the format of saying, okay, I'm going to do the opposite sign of that, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides, okay, so I get x on this side, x plus 2 is 10, so x equals 10, okay, so this is our first review, a second review is x, oh, I don't like these ones, x plus 3 equals 7, so I'm going to subtract 3, subtract 3, so I would get x on this side because 3 minus 3 equals 0. 7 minus 3 equals 4, so x equals 4. Okay, another little thing that I want to say because I've seen a lot on your homeworks and on your tests that you still are having a hard time with like negative 4 plus 2. Okay, you guys, all this is saying is, okay, I have $2, but I owe $4. Okay, so if I have $2, and I pay off my $2 to you, I still owe you $2, okay? What about 5 minus 8? Okay, so if I have $5, but I owe you $8, and I pay up my $5, I say, I'm sorry, but I still owe you $3. Okay, what about this one? Negative 4 plus 7. You guys, all this one is saying is what is 7 minus 4? Okay, because remember, if we circle what's in front of them, we can just move them around. So I can say 7 minus 4 equals 3. Okay, this one equals 3. A lot of you have been putting a negative sign, but if I have $7 and I owe you $4, I would still have $3 after paying you. Okay, so the, this, that's, I just want you guys to slow down when you're, when you're doing positive and negatives because it looks, I mean like this one right here, that's, you've been doing that since first grade. 7 minus 4 is 3, but we're getting it wrong on our test. So I just want to make sure that we're clear on that. Whenever you see a minus, think, okay, that's what I owe. Whenever you see a positive, that's what I have. But what if I owe $7 and I owe $8? Okay, how much money do I owe in all? Well, I owe, whoops, I owe $15. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding them. When they're both negative, I'm going to add them together. When they're opposites, I'm going to subtract the bigger number from the smaller number and see if that's positive or negative. All right, there's my little rant on adding positives and negatives. Now let's move on. Okay, the first one we are going to do says x minus 5 sixths equals 1 tenth. Okay, so I have to do my opposite sign, so I'm going to add 5 sixths to both sides. Okay, so I'm left with x equals on this side. Now I have to do 1 tenth plus 5 sixths. Okay, I need to get a common denominator. Well, I'm looking at 30. I can do 30. So I can multiply by 3, multiply by 3, and I would get 3 thirtieths. Plus, then I'd multiply by 5, multiply by 5, I would get 25 thirtieths. Okay, so total I'd get 28 thirtieths. Now I can reduce that by a lot. I'm going to start with 2 though. So that would go in there 1 14 fifteenths. I guess I can't reduce it by a lot, just by 2. So 14 fifteenths is what my x equals. All right, let's try another one. x plus 5 eighths equals 7 eighths. All right, now I need to do my opposite sign that I have there. So I'm going to subtract 5 eighths 
from both sides. So now I'm going to get x. Oh, sorry, that's not an equal sign because they don't equal each other. So I'm going to get x equals. Now I have to do what is 7 eighths minus 5 eighths. Well, 7, they already have a common denominator. Remember when we are adding and subtracting, we need a common denominator. Okay? Not when we're multiplying, not when we're dividing, just adding and subtracting. Okay, so 7 minus 5 is 2. We keep our denominator the same, 2 eighths. Now let's reduce. You guys, reducing is so important. I am not going to accept any answers that are not simplified all the way down. Okay, so I can divide by 2, divide by 2, I'd get 1 on the top. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 1 fourth is my answer for this one. All right, number 3. Sorry, I'm sure you hear my dog in the background. m minus a negative 7 tenths equals a negative 1 and 1 fifth. Fifths, sorry, not fifteenths, one fifth. Okay, remember way, way back when I said we are subtracting a negative number. They both become positives, and that's really the same as me saying I'm adding them. Because I'm subtracting the opposite, well, that would be the same as adding. So I'm not subtracting an, or adding a negative, I am adding a positive number when I have two negatives in a row. So really, I can erase these two and I can say I'm adding 7 tenths. Okay, that's what that means right there. So now I'm going to subtract 7 tenths from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to get m equals, now I have negative 1 and 1 fifth minus 7 tenths. Okay, so I'm going to circle up. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 more is negative 6 fifths minus 7 tenths. Now let's get our common denominator. Multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. Okay, so I get negative 12 tenths minus 7 tenths. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. If I owe 12 tenths and I owe 7 tenths, I just need to add them together and no, my answer is going to be negative. Okay, so if I add them together, I would get, well, let me rewrite it, 12 tenths plus 7 tenths. I'm adding them because I owe both of them. So here's my O symbol right here. I owe this money. Okay, so 7 plus 12 equals 19 tenths. Or if I change it into a mixed number, that would be 1 and 9 tenths. Okay, a negative 1 and 9 tenths would be my answer. Remember, when, that, when I'm subtracting, when, I'm, when there's two negative numbers, because really, here's what I'm looking at, negative 12 tenths, negative 7 tenths. When I have two negative numbers, I just add them together. Just like if I said I owe you $2 and I owe him $1, I owe $3, so it would be a negative 3. So that's why we add them together. All right, I want to move this guy up a little bit. If, if you guys are having a hard time, please rewatch that and try to make some sense of it because this is so very important that you can work with positive and negative numbers and do a lot with them, not just do whole numbers, but now we're doing fractions. Okay, so please watch that again and pay very close attention to everything I say if something didn't make sense right there. All right, so now let's try number four. Again, this is a tricky one. W minus 14 and 1 twelfth equals a negative 2 and 3 fourths. Okay, so I need to circle up 12 times 14. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4, add my 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. So I'd get an 8. 4 plus 2 is 6. And a 1. So I would get 168. Ooh, plus 1. 169. Twelfths. And I'm adding that to both sides. 
because I have my subtracting sign here, I have to do the opposite, so I need to add. So I'll be left with W equals on the left side. Now I have to circle up my negative 2 and 3 fourths. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 more is 9, 10, 11 fourths. So I have negative 11 fourths plus 169 twelfths. Okay, now I'm going to get a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, so I would get negative 33 twelfths plus 169 twelfths. Now this is what I was talking to you guys about. This is like saying negative 1 plus 4, it's the same as saying 4 minus 1. Okay, because I have my negative 1, there's my negative 1, and my positive 4, there's my positive 4. So really all I'm doing is I'm saying, what is 169 twelfths minus 33 twelfths? Okay, so let's take our 169 minus 33. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. 136. So I've got 136 twelfths. Well, how many times can 136 go in there? I'm scooching over here. Sorry, guys. I'm all over the place here. This one's taking a lot of space up. Divided by 12. Well, I can go in there once. Left with 1. Bring down my 6. Okay, so I have 16 now. It'll go in there one time. Minus 12. I'm left with 4. Okay, so I know it'll go in there 11 times total. And then I'm going to see what is 12 times 11. Now well, that's 2, 1, add my 0, 2, 1. So it is 132. So, and I need to get up to 136. So I have, what's 136 minus 132? 4. So I have 4 twelfths left over. Okay, now if I divide by 4, divide by 4, I'm left with 1 third. So 11 and 1 third is my answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Better at that. Okay, number 5. We got two more left to do, and then you'll be good to go on your own. This one says h minus a negative 6 and a half equals 14 and 1 fourth. Again, you guys, minus a negative, I'm honestly just adding. Adding 6 and a half. Okay, so I need to subtract 6 and a half from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to circle up. I'm going to do 14 times 4. Okay, I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to be more, more organized here. 14 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 more is 5. Okay, so I'm going to get a 57. Oops, okay. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Okay. So I'm going to get a 57 fourths. And then I need to subtract from that. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 more is 13 halves. So I need to multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So I'd get 57 fourths minus 26 fourths. Okay, so what is 57 minus 26? 31 fourths. Okay, so I'm left with H on this side. H equals 4 goes into 31, I'm thinking 7 because that's 28. Yep. 7, and it goes up to 28, so I mean 29, 30, 31, so I'm left with 3 fourths after that. 7 and 3 fourths is my answer for that one. Okay, here we go, last one here. Number 6, P minus 5 and 3 eighths equals negative 11 20 fourths. Okay. So first off, I'm going to add 5 and 3 eighths to both sides. Oops, 5 and 3 eighths. Okay, so I have a negative 11 24ths plus, 
Now I'm going to circle up. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 3 more is 43 eighths. Now I need to get a common denominator here. Well, I'm going to multiply by 3, multiply by 3. So 43 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12. So now I have negative 11 24ths plus 129 24ths. Remember what I said. This is the same as saying negative 1 plus 4. I can rewrite that as 4 minus 1. So that's how I'm going to rewrite this one. I'm going to say 129 24ths minus 11 24ths. I'm going to rewrite that so we don't get confused here. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just take what is 129 minus 11. 9 minus 1 is 8. 2 minus 1 is 1. And 1, so I've got 118 24 fourths. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking here. 24 is almost 25. And there are four 25s in 100. I don't think it's going to go all the way in, so I'm going to say P equals 4. Okay, what is 4 times 24? 8, 96. So 118 minus 96. 8 minus 6 is 2. Uh, 0, 11, 9, 10, 11, 22. So I'm left with 22. 24. It's okay, I can divide by 2, divide by 2, I'd get 11 twelfths. So 4 and 11 twelfths is my answer. Okie dokie, that's all that I have for you today. So please, 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 if there's a question, make sure you come in early and ask it, or come in at lunch and ask it. Please just come in if you have any questions. Or talk to me on Edmodo. Thank you for watching.